Okay, so here's my Z-Box, really tiny computer, and of course my flash drive with Windows on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, for now, I'm going to attach this little computer to my 27-inch monitor that I use with my PC build. And I'm going to do that with an HDMI cord here. So I'm going to attach it from the back of the computer to the monitor, and then I'm going to fire it up for the first time, and we'll see if it boots into the BIOS. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the flash drive here so I can actually upload or actually load Windows Vista on this little computer. So let's get started. Okay, so let's turn on the Zotac Z-Box here. And it gives a little beep. And as you can see, there's a little light on top of the device here. And let's pan up to the monitor and actually turn the monitor on. All right, so as you can see here, it says reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device and press a key. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the USB key that uh, we made here with Windows on it, and I'm going to plug it into the Z-Box. Now, I think I forgot to mention I actually have a wireless keyboard attached to the Z-Box in one of the other USB ports. So I'm going to hit Enter. So let's reboot this little device, and hopefully it will boot straight off of the USB key. There we go, Windows is loading files. All right, seems to be working just fine. It says Windows Vista language to install. And of course I do have my wireless mouse here as well. And I obviously speak English and time and currency format, English, United States, sounds good. Keyboard or input method, United States. And let's hit next and hit install now. Okay, I'm going to accept the license terms. And this Windows install should be quicker because it is being done off of a flash drive. And flash drive media is much faster than optical media. So let's see if that holds up. Hit next. And of course it's the custom install. Now I believe this is a 320 gigabyte hard drive in this little computer here. And there are no partitions on it as you can see. So we're just going to click through and hit next. Okay, so Windows has loaded up on the Z-Box, and now I have to choose a username and picture and all that good stuff. So why don't I do that right now? Now it wants me to type a computer name. I'll do HTPC for Home Theater PC. And of course I'll use the recommended settings here. And I'm on the Eastern Time Zone. Let's hit next and hit start. Now I don't have the Z-Box hooked up to any speakers, so you're not going to hear any sound out of it just yet. Okay, so there we go. We have Windows successfully loaded on the device. The only thing now that we have to load up on it are the drivers. Now this machine actually came with a driver disk and it's right here. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to load up this disk onto the same flash drive that I used to load Windows on. So I'm going to wipe the flash drive clean to get rid of the Windows installation disk on it. And I'm going to have to use the same method of dragging and dropping everything from this disk onto the flash drive so that I can load up the specific drivers for this little device. So let me just log on here so you can actually see right now without the drivers on the Z-Box what it looks like with Windows on it. So there you go with the giant icons and all. Let's X out of that. And that's what it looks like without all the proper drivers on it. Okay, I transferred all the drivers onto the flash drive and I'm gonna fire up the Z-Box again. Let me just turn on the monitor here. And I'm gonna turn on the little computer again. And it should load straight up into Windows. Okay, so I have Windows loaded up here, and let's go to Computer here, and let's bring up the flash drive. And I'm gonna hit the Install here. 
and hit continue. Now, as I mentioned before, there are no speakers hooked up to the Zotac Z-Box at this time. I will be hooking them up once I have all the drivers loaded up. But let's start with the AMD chipset driver here and load that onto the device. All right, of course I speak English here, so I'm gonna hit next here. And I'm gonna hit install. I'm gonna hit express here and then hit next. And of course, accept the EULA and click through this here. Okay, those drivers are installed. Let's click on finish down here. And it says, actions taken by Catalyst Install Manager require a system boot. Would you like to reboot now? Why not? All right, let's see what we got here. As you can tell, the resolution is different. And it says, Microsoft.NET Framework is required to run Catalyst Control Center. Please download and install the software from Microsoft website. Okay. Now everything's a little bit messed up here, but we'll fix that soon. Let's just go back to computer here and go back to the flash drive. Go back to install. All right, and let's install the Realtek HD audio driver here. All right, let's click on next here. All right, that's installed, so it wants me to restart the computer. I might as well do that now. All right, the display is a little off still, but let's finish up with these uh, drivers here. Okay, so the Realtek HD audio driver is installed. Let's do the Realtek network driver. All right, that was successfully installed. Let's hit finish, and let's hit the next one here, which is the USB 3.0 driver. All right, that's completed. Let's hit finish. And the last one here is mass storage driver. All right, looks like that's completed. Hit finish. I think we're done installing all the drivers here. All right, I adjusted the resolution a little bit just so that it would actually fit on the screen here. Let me X out of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to restart the computer. Okay, so I've loaded up all the drivers on the Zotac Z-Box. Unfortunately, I'm running Windows Vista on this device, and most of the drivers are for either Windows XP or Windows 7. Some of the Windows 7 drivers are also for Windows Vista. So I had to actually do a mixture of some XP drivers and some Windows 7 drivers to get everything to work. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth, I couldn't get the Bluetooth drivers to work on this device, which isn't a big problem for me because I don't have any Bluetooth peripherals. But all the other drivers are loaded up and working perfectly. I do plan on upgrading this to Windows 7 so that I can use the full Windows 7 drivers on the device and get my Bluetooth and everything working. But for now, this will work. So let me actually fire this up. And you can see the boot up here. And I've done a couple of things with the device to actually make it look good on my television set here because this is my living room. This is going to be my living room PC or my home theater PC in my living room. And when you have, you know, a Windows computer running on a screen like this, you definitely have to make the icons and everything bigger. So I kind of optimized it for my seating position in my room here. So here we go, it's booting up. And you hear the startup sequence. And as you can see, the icons are a little bit bigger. I made them the largest that you could without actually specifying the actual size yourself. So I think it's around twice the normal size. Let me just get my mouse here. And I have a wireless mouse that I'm using. I'm going to enter the living room user here. And there we go. So as you can see, the icons are a little bit bigger. Like I said, they're about twice as big as they normally would be. And I have a Google Chrome icon here and a Recycle Bin icon here, and that's it. There's no real other need for anything on this device because most of the time what I'm gonna be using is the web browser. I do have plans to use the Windows Media Center function on this device. And as you've seen on my channel, I have a lot of reviews on a lot of these little network media streamers, and I love trying those things out. 
But there's really nothing like having an actual computer, a full computer, attached to your television set because then you don't have any limitations. You can get network TV content. You can get Hulu without having to pay for Hulu Plus. So as you can see, I have the taskbar hidden down here. And I generally do that on my smaller screen devices, so I actually do that on my laptop. I don't do that on my PC build, my desktop, because the screen is so large. But in a case like this, I'd rather not have it there. I'd rather have it invisible. I'd rather have it as clean as possible. And then, of course, just enter into Chrome, and there we go. Right now, I only have Netflix as a bookmark up here, but I'll put you know, Hulu and any other site that I frequent up here. That way, I just have a one-click entry into all of the video sites that I visit on the Internet. So that's the Zotac Z-Box. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And that pretty much does it for this video. So I'll see you guys next time.